Welcome to another Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Good to be with you at Horse Center. Uh, we got races at your hometown track this weekend. Yeah, Churchill Downs is back. Uh, uh, unfortunately, they had to close a little bit early during the spring. Uh, unfortunate circumstance. Uh, nothing was found to be wrong with the track. We're back at Churchill Downs Saturday. But Matt, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're talking Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby qualifying races already. That's crazy to me. Uh, we're also talking Breeders' Cup prep seven weeks out from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. So we're talking about the grade three Iroquois, the grade three Pocahontas. And the good news, Matt, is there are a lot of uh, talented looking young horses in these races. Good fields, nine horse fields, good betting races. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. And I agree. It's a little weird. Seven weeks uh, till the Breeders' Cup and 230 some days till uh, the Oaks of the Derby. But here we are in uh, 2023 racing. That's uh, that's too, too, 2023. That's too many days to talk about, Matt. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the these are the, the first official points races. So you know, I, I don't know if any of these horses will make it to the first Friday, first Saturday of May, uh, but uh, it doesn't hurt to get some early points. Here's our cover boy today. It's Risk It. Risk It, of course, was a good looking winner of his debut at Saratoga. He was uh, well backed and uh, he performed uh, like he was uh, bet in that maiden race at Saratoga, Matt. Let's take a look at the field for the one mile Iroquois. By the way, both of these races on Saturday, nine horses, grade three, one mile, and uh, qualifying points for the Derby and Oaks, as we said. Risk it number eight. I, I think he'll be a pretty clear favorite in here, Matt. Uh, son of gun runner, uh, good looking chestnut, as you can see there. He, he ran to his odds in that first uh, unveiling at Saratoga. Yes, I, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, probably the horse to beat. Uh, interesting thing about uh, this Iroquois is that the entire field, all nine horses, uh, Brian, only have one win, only have a maiden special weight uh, victory in their past performances. Uh, for some of, for a bunch of them in the field, uh, Brian, they only have that one maiden victory. There are others that have subsequent starts, and there are a few that have some stakes experience. Risk It is in that category of, I think, four two-year-olds that have just their debut victory. And I think it's pretty clear that Risk It's debut uh, uh, victory was the most impressive visually at Saratoga. Uh, talking about uh, 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 speed figures, whatever you like, or thoroughgraph numbers, uh, Risk It uh, uh, is impressive. Yeah, Risk It looks fast. Uh, that race at Saratoga, going six furlongs, was good. This was very good. Uh, but there are other impressive, as you say, first time out debut winners that are coming into this Iroquois second race. They're all stretching out a little bit, some of them more than others, in distance to the one mile distance. So. Uh, Going up to graded stakes and stretching out to a mile is not the easiest thing in the world. I think Risk It is beatable, but uh, just off potential, uh, probably a deserving favorite. Now, the horse outside him also looks pretty fast, Matt. Patriot Spirit, big winner. Colonial Downs. Uh, Colonial Downs, they've, they've done well, actually, in the last couple of years bringing uh, uh, young horses on dirt. We think often think of that as a turf track. Uh, but uh, last year there was a, a graded stakes winner at uh, Churchill Downs that came directly out of a maiden at uh, Colonial Downs. It could happen again with Patriot Spirit. One thing I, I want to say about the likely favorite and, and probable second choice here, Matt, is they both have speed and they're both hung outside a little bit. Yeah, and uh, uh, right, there is that question of uh, Colonial Downs uh, versus Saratoga, uh, but a lot of the things that we said about Risk It's performance, we could say about Patriot uh, Spirit. Uh, this this uh, guy was two to one, so not quite as heavy a favorite uh, um, at Colonial Downs. 
won by a big margin of of six lengths, uh, pressed the pace a little bit early in the race, but was very quickly on the lead and drew off handily to to victory. Yeah, there there could be some speed in here, Matt, as we look again at the field. Uh, Risk It and Patriot Spirit, two horses who showed speed, but there are other horses in the race who have shown speed. In fact, let's put up the Timeform US pace projector now, Matt. And yeah, they're, they're projecting a fast pace in here. It, it makes a little sense because a lot of these horses are coming out of shorter races. Uh, but uh, there they are, the eight and the nine, the likely two favorites, uh, Risk It and Patriot Spirit right out there, as well as Gettysburg Address. Gettysburg Address also a debut winner. So the top three there are all coming out of only one race. Gettysburg Address was the least impressive of the three, uh, but he's got some breeding to, to stretch out for trainer Brad Cox. Flavian Pratt's getting aboard for this one. Um, he's listed at 12 to 1, actually, on the morning line, Matt. I think he'll be lower than that, but he'll have to improve off his win at Ellis Park. I agree. He'll he'll certainly be lower than that than that, especially being trained by Brad Cox. And it was a little bit interesting that uh, in that debut victory, he was wearing blinkers. Yeah, he showed. Uh, he also showed some um, a fight down the stretch. He had to he had to work harder than the other horses here who are coming out of first out wins. The other one is Union Roll. Union Roll, you'll see, is the number three. It's a little farther back on this time form. U.S. pace projector, Matt. Union Roll trained by Todd Fletcher. Uh, he won at Monmouth Park. So like Matriot, uh, Patriot Spirit, maybe uh, not coming out of as big a track or as a track where you'd expect top graded stakes winners to uh, to debut. But that's very common for Fletcher to, uh, to run horses early at Monmouth Park. And Union Roll, also a good looking winner. And Union Roll may be a horse who can come from off it just a little bit more than the first two we talked about. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into the fact that uh, this guy debuted at Monmouth Park. Uh, Pletcher's got a lot of two-year-olds uh, for a lot of good owners. So many, only so much so, stall space at Saratoga, um, and so this uh, this guy was training at Monmouth, and and it was a nice uh, nice victory by uh, more than five lengths, and it just happened a month ago. Yeah, yeah. Union Roll is a horse who has but to be a horse who can come from off the pace a little bit. I said Gettysburg Address will be bet lower than those 12 to 1 morning line odds. Uh, Union Roll 5 to 1 or so, maybe even a little bit higher on the Pletcher debut winner. Uh, there's some others in here to talk about, Matt. Uh, who have some stakes experience. Um, D. Wayne Lucas has a couple in here, Market Street and Seize the Gray. Actually, I like them in the inverse order of their odds because Seize the Gray is one of two sons of Arrogate in the field. And after a dull debut, he's come alive last two times, wet tracks, but uh, he's a horse who could stretch out well, and he's also a horse who can come from off the pace a little bit. Yeah, and that's what we really come to expect from uh, Lucas's two-year-olds. They they very rarely are uh, at 100% for their first starts, which seemed to be the case with uh, with with Seas the Cray. Came back to get a nice maiden special aid victory in his second start at Saratoga. And he is one of the ones in the field that I mentioned earlier that has some uh, stakes experience it was in an off the turf race uh, uh, in the Skidmore. I don't know if uh, Lucas really intended uh, to run the horse on the turf. There had been so much rain up there. I, I feel like he was probably taking a shot that it would come off the turf, and it did. Um, he got off to a slow start uh, in that race, was in last place, but rallied nicely to get up for third. Yeah, got up for third, and now he stretches out to a mile. Son of Arrogate, uh, an interesting long shot in here. Uh, I wouldn't throw out the other Arrogate as well, Matt. Liberal Arts, Liberal Arts, uh, maybe not as spectacular looking on past performances, but 20 to 1 might be about right. And Liberal Arts has ran third, second, and first in uh, maiden races at Ellis Park. Another Arrogate who could stretch out. Let's talk about Steve Asmussen's other horse in the race, though, Matt, because I think he's very interesting. Edified was a uh, good-looking debut winner like uh, some of the others in the field, but he came back in a stakes race, Matt, and it was a trouble trip. 
Yeah, it certainly was a troubled trip. Uh, uh, you mentioned good looking. I assume that he's been good looking since he was a yearling because he sold for uh, $650,000 as a yearling. Um, was a nice debut winner in July at uh, Ellis Park by more than three lengths. And yeah, I think that that... Uh, 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 Stakes experience in the Saratoga Special, which had a which had a decent field, um, in my opinion, is going to be helpful. I think he pretty much lost all chance uh, when he broke at the back of the field. Yeah, yeah, a tough trip uh, from for uh, for that one uh, edified in the Saratoga Special. Of course, the winner won off. Um, I wouldn't put too much stock in that poor looking performance on paper because yeah the start and even a little bit of trouble along the way edified certainly could bounce back and you see some nice morning line odds on edified like we said we think these are good betting races here the iroquois and the pocahontas and uh these are the boys uh, again kentucky derby qualifying points are on the line but also i i could see as much potential in this field seven weeks out that the winner of this uh, race goes straight out to California to uh, compete in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile next, Matt. And I could probably say the same thing about the Pocahontas. Like I said, grade three, one mile, Churchill Downs. And if there's potential in the Iroquois, there possibly could be even more potential in this Pocahontas field. Again, a field of nine. Again, a pretty good betting race, Matt. I, I think there are a lot of interesting horses. I think the morning line odds maker has it wrong with the favorite. I, I'm not sure. They, there's horses to bet in here for sure, and we're not sure who's going to be the favorite. But if I was doing the odds board, I would have put VV's Dream as the favorite. That's Kenny McPeak, who's had good luck in the Pocahontas before. Brian Hernandez Jr.'s aboard. VV's Dream was an impressive uh, rallying debut winner at Churchill Downs. And, and then last time, you know, right now, if you talk about the best two-year-old fillies east of the Mississippi, I would put Bright Work and Ways and Means at one and two on the list. And uh, VV Stream was pretty darn close to Bright, Wick in her, Bright Work in her second career race. Yeah, I agree, Brian. That is a that is an impressive thing, and that's probably, you know, that's probably the reason that maybe you or I would make this horse uh, uh, the favorite. Yeah, he, uh, she, excuse me was a, a really good second behind the filly that you mentioned named bright work who was actually four for four uh in her career right now with a very nice win in the spin away last time uh, vivi's dream was an impressive winner uh of her maiden special weight at churchill downs by more than six lengths yeah a nice win over the track and she's shown the ability to come from off the pace which is helpful uh, VV Stream, yeah, Bright Work went to Saratoga after she beat VV Stream in a stakes race at Ellis Park, and she won two graded stakes. So Bright Work uh, has done great work since uh, a pretty tough victory over VV Stream. VV Stream has had her races spaced out a little bit by Kenny McPeak. That makes me think that he thinks he's not trying to strike while the iron's hot, and this filly has a future. And uh, stretching out to a mile, I think, is a question. But uh, I could certainly see VV Stream, the favorite here, and a horse who's headed to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies next. She is a daughter of Matoli. So, again, uh, we don't know if she wants to go uh, farther, but we'll see here. The horse that actually is the favorite on the Churchill Downs morning line she should get bad. Uh, you almost had me. This is a, another Brad Cox horse match. She looked so good in winning uh, a Keeneland maiden race. I guess that was back in April. And then during the Kentucky Derby uh, Festival, she uh, she beat the boys and, and she did both of those sprints quite handily. That was a while ago, though, and she's only had one race since. And she did get beat last time at Ellis Park. Yeah, but yeah, an interesting horse. It's Brad Cox, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, this is the only filly in the field with two victories. So sort of similar uh, uh, it, to what we mentioned in the Iroquois. Most of the horses in this Pocahontas have just the one win. Some of them just have the one start. A couple of them have some stakes experience. And uh, uh, you almost uh, had me is a stakes winner early in her career, like you mentioned, beating the boys. Um, 
uh, it's Brad Cox. You know the horse is going to get bad. Yes, you will get bad. Um, coming off a loss, uh, that was after a layoff. And, and I think it's interesting here because you see the precocity of some of these two-year-olds early on. And this this one just bombed them uh, going, I guess, four and a half at Keeneland. And then uh, soon after that, five furlongs at Churchill Downs. So early in, in the juvenile, the two-year-old season. Uh, she had a little bit of break. Again, I think Cox wanted to see what she could do in the fall. Um, maybe she was uh, a little bit farther back than uh, we would have expected in that Ellis Park debutante. But the, the filly that beat her last time, Hot Beach, is in the race, Matt. And Hot Beach is interesting, too. She's a daughter of Omaha Beach, a good young sire. You remember how talented he was. Hot Beach uh, came out as a heavy favorite in a debut race where she had a little bit of trouble and she ran second behind a fast winner in a maiden debut at Ellis Park. And then she came right back and won the Ellis uh, Park debutante nicely over You Almost Had Me and another filly in the field, Ripperton. So it's a pretty good field. And she looked good winning by two legs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to come back and and get a stakes win in the debutante. I think it was running two divisions. Uh, 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 but yeah, that that division that uh, Hot Beach was in was a very nice one with a couple from this field in there. Very confusing, actually. There's two different debutantes run at Ellis Park this year, uh, but uh, weeks ah. apart because one was the Churchill debutante, which was moved, and that one uh, gotcha. of course was won by Bright Work over VV's. Uh, what's her name? VV's Dream. Um, oh, wrong race. There it is. VV Stream, yeah, that was uh, that was early July. So VV Stream hasn't run for for over two months. The more recent one, the Ellis Park debutante, that's where Hot Beach looked good, beating the heavy favorite. You also you almost had me in Ripperton. Hot Beach was uh, well liked though in her debut and a good performance uh, to break her maiden in that Ellis Park debutante. She picks up Flavian Pratt. Uh, as well for trainer Brian Lynch. So three horses who should get plenty of action here in the Pocahontas. But there are others in here, Matt. Let's move to the rail. Empire Island, um, Mary Lou Whitney. We've seen uh, we've seen the Whitney Silks for a lifetime here. Mar Mary Lou Whitney owns and bred Empire Island, trained by Norm Cassie, a nice debut winner at Saratoga. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, uh since going out on his own, Norm Cassie has had some runners for uh, for Whitney Stable from the beginning. I don't know, Brian. I don't think there was a trainer that was hotter at Saratoga than Norm Cassie. He was winning with uh, uh, two-year-olds. He was winning with claimers. Um, just won uh, uh, five, six races out of a very small number of starters so it'll be interesting to see if cassie can continue with that hot hand uh in the pocahontas yeah it's it's nice to see young norm cassie doing well son of of course mark cassie empire island um was not a daylight winner at saratoga but it was a nice performance uh winning her debut she's had very good workouts at churchill downs and as you say norm cassie's getting good horses and winning races Empire Island uh, looks like a, a daughter of classic empire. Looks like she should be okay stretching out in distance as well. Uh, I mentioned Ripperton already. Ripperton um, was a uh, maiden winner at Ellis Park as she was uh, in that field with Hot Beach and you almost had me. And she was the one running well in the stretch. She actually uh, beat out you almost had me for second there, Matt. Ripperton probably won't be bet much again here, getting a little bit more distance. Ripperton looks like an interesting horse as well. Yeah, I agree. It's got that extra experience, which uh, uh, gives uh, those horses an edge over the ones that are uh, coming out of just um, just a maiden race. And let's take a look. I, I mentioned that Ripperton might uh, be one to rally in here. Um, Ripperton oh, did it again. Sorry, folks. Let's get the Pocahontas up. Yeah, Ripperton, you see her back near the uh, the end of the field here, the number three, back there with actually VV Stream. I, I'm not sure I'm buying that because VV Stream is coming out of sprints uh, or shorter sprints. And I, I would expect VV Stream to be a little bit more 
closer. But Riverton, I think, would be one that could rally. And again, we see that fast pace button, Matt. Actually, Empire Island is the one they have out on the early lead here. Yeah, which is interesting. You know, you know uh, he's going to be, she, excuse me, she's going to be on the rail and that could, uh, you know, th that could be a reason for her to go to the lead. I mean, she, she won that uh, uh, debut race uh, with a little bit of a stalking trip. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, coming out of a sprint again, uh, they're projecting her, but I could easily see you almost had me showing a lot more speed this time. Uh, Penures coming out of a mile win, uh, wired that race at Ellis Park, maiden race. Uh, Raining Sugar is another one who won her debut. Let's talk about the five just a little bit. Regal Rumor, she's done very little wrong in her two races, Matt. Um, second to a big performance in her debut, and then her herself, she ran a pretty darn good race in her second start. Yep, for the cat man, Wayne Catalano. Wayne Catalano, and he, she is working well, too. I'm not sure if a mile is going to be her game. We'll see. Finally, it's about time we talked about the other Pletcher. Pletcher, interestingly, has two undefeated horses, one for the Iroquois, one for the Pocahontas, uh, one coming from Monmouth. Corby debuted at Ellis Park, and Corby was a uh, first-out winner, again, for trainer Todd Pletcher. Yeah, again, we're talking about Pletcher. We're talking about having so many good uh, uh, two-year-olds uh, looking for, no doubt, uh, good spots to start these horses in. So uh, Corby went to uh, Ellis Park in August and uh, won her maiden first time out going seven furlongs. Going seven furlongs, which is interesting and is uh, true for his other two-year-old running on Saturday as well. Uh, Matt, it, it strikes me that Alice Park is uh, more important than ever. Of course, Alice Park had a longer meet this year because of Churchill Downs closing down unexpectedly. Uh, but Churchill's back. It'll be interesting to see. Almost all of these Phillies uh, have run at Alice Park and are coming from Alice Park. So it'll be interesting to see how that form carries over. But uh, much like the males, a lot of potential here and horses from this race, I think, could move on. Uh, for sure, to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yeah, int uh, interesting fields from both. Good fields, perhaps very good betting opportunities in this nine-horse field. Uh, you win one with a good price, Matt. You'll be happy out of the two. Let's uh, let's jump to our top picks. By the way, there there were other races we looked at this weekend. Woodbine. We haven't even mentioned Woodbine. Uh, Woodbine has a, a trio of grade one races with Breeders' Cup implications, but we decided that these two-year-old races were very interesting better than your races, as is the Locust Grove, another graded stakes on the Saturday card at Churchill Downs for older females. Matt, without further ado, let's get to our top picks for these two nice races. Uh, we did the boys first, so let's start with the boys, and of course, you have the honor, sir. Okay, Brian, uh, I, I'm going to look for a little bit of a price uh, in the Iroquois. I'm going to go with one of the horses that uh, uh, has experience, a little bit more experience over just that first start. I think that Steve Asmussen has the two best horses in this race with Risk It, but I'm not going to go with Risk It. I am going to go with Edified uh little experience and that bad trip in the Saratoga special. I look for uh, an improved stakes run from him in the Iroquois. Matt, you could be right. Um, you, you know, you, you, you made a stand there by saying Aspison has the best two horses in this race. It's, it's possible he does. Edified looked really good in his debut. And then, yeah, I think we can draw a line through that Saratoga special. I am also trying to beat, uh, okay. Risk it in here. Risk it might be the the, the 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 highest ceiling out of anybody in the field, but I think it's tough with other speed stretching out to a mile on the outside a little bit. I think it's a tough spot for a horse who's only had one race and it'll probably be slightly under two to one in the Iroquois. So I agree with you. I'm going to try to beat him. I'm going to look for a horse who can come from off the pace a little bit. I think Union Roll wants to run farther. I like his maiden win. I know it came against probably a little bit lesser at Monmouth Park. But those Monmouth Park maiden races haven't been bad uh, this year and in recent years. So I'm going to go with Pletcher here. I'm going to go with Union Roll 
from off the pace in the Iroquois, both of us agreeing to try to beat that favorite, risk it. In the Pocahontas, Matt, who do you like? Pocahontas. I am going with uh, Empire Island from the rail with Norm Cassie, with Norm Cassie staying hot, um, moving back to uh, more of his home base uh, in Kentucky at Churchill Downs. I don't think we mentioned it in any of our rundowns that these are mile races, but they are one turn miles at Churchill Downs. That's right, Matt. There, there's the long shoot there at Churchill Downs. So these are one turn races. One turn, one mile races. Sometimes I like to bet horses who can come from off the pace. That was my thinking with Union Roll. I think Hot Beach will come from off the pace a little bit. Uh, I think she'll be close early, but I like this Omaha Beach filly. Um, she she can pass horses. I think her debut was sneaky good, and the fact that they bet her down that day. I think I think Brian Lynch Brian Lynch has a good one here. I like the jockey switch. I think she can stalk and pounce from her outside position. And uh, she beat the morning line favorite pretty convincingly last time at Alice Park. I think she's going to beat her again. I hope that's enough to get the job done in the Pocahontas. All right, Matt, that's uh, that's our show. We're looking, yeah, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks points. But I think uh, more in the now, we're looking at potential Breeders' Cup courses. And we're looking, again, at a possible, uh, some nice payoff Saturday at Churchill Downs. Before we go, though, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, four different horses from Brian and I in our picks this weekend. So uh, uh, none of them the favorite. None of them the favorite. Right. Doesn't happen that that often. Uh, yeah. Hey, I, I, it's starting to feel a little bit more like the fall uh, now. Churchill Downs is opening uh, uh, this week. Uh, New York Racing is back at Aqueduct with the Belmont at the Big A meeting. Boy, Brian, we're going to be at Aqueduct until Saratoga next year. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Belmont Park. Uh, nothing wrong with Aqueduct, but I love Belmont Park. So uh, good luck at Aqueduct for the next uh 10, 10 Long months. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the Aqueduct is uh, not a bad place, though, and they'll have plenty of good races uh, while Bel Belmont is being uh, restructured. All right, Matt, uh, that's it. That's the show. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that for us. Matt and I appreciate it. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss any more shows. And leave us a comment. We uh, we enjoy reading the comments every week here at Horse Center. want to also thank our uh, uh, friend in the home office, part of the team, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics, Timeform US, of course, for the pace projections we use on the show, and our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Folks, next week we'll be back. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about uh, parks, Matt, next week. Big weekend at parks coming a week from Saturday uh, with the Penn Derby and the Cotillion and much more there. All of these races, of course, leading up to the Breeders' Cup, only seven weeks away. Tune in right here to Horse Center every week, folks. We'll see you next week.